Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. What is liquidity? Well, liquidity is the firm's ability to meet its short-term obligations, not long-term obligations, but short-term obligations. These are uh, obligations that it has to um, people like its uh, suppliers, uh, maybe uh, to banks for the money that it owes in the short term to those banks. But we don't really consider the more long-term obligations like its long-term bank loans in this uh, liquidity uh, area. So how do we assess liquidity for any individual firm? And we really need to do this on the individual firm uh, level and worry about um, the um, uh, individual firm's position. Well, we examine current assets and current liabilities. We don't worry too much about non-current assets and non-current liabilities because those are uh, either uh, economic benefits or obligations over the longer term. We're interested in the shorter term, which means we're looking at current. Um, and we need to look into the details of the current assets and current liabilities. What are they uh, made up of? How much uh, have we got in the bank? How much have we got um, in receivables? That means money that we're going to receive from our customers. How long will it take to receive that money? Uh, we can uh, look at some uh, ratios on that as well. Um, and um, on the uh, liability side, we have payables. That is the money we owe to our suppliers. How quickly do we have to pay that? Uh, and all those kind of issues uh, in relation to current assets and current liabilities. There are two metrics or measures or ratios that we use in this area. And uh, they are the current ratio uh, and the quick ratio. The quick ratio can also sometimes be called the asset test uh, ratio. And the current ratio is super simple. It is just current assets over current liabilities. And we express our answer to one. So if a company had current assets of um, uh, you know, 2 million euro and it had current liabilities of 1 million euro, uh, then the current ratio would be 2 to 1. And sometimes people write it with a colon uh, and sometimes they write it 2 to 1. Okay, so the bigger the current are, are the um, the the bigger that the current assets are compared to the current liabilities the higher the current ratio will be in general we think that a high current ratio uh, uh, is is higher liquidity okay higher current ratio uh, higher liquidity um, so a better liquidity position if you have a high current ratio However, we don't want to get too uh, bogged down in, in this metric. Um, uh, we want to also consider what the current assets are made up of. If there's a lot of non-liquid assets in the current assets, then maybe the liquidity position isn't as good as it appears at first uh, glance or at looking at the current ratio. So if we have a lot of inventory um, that stock uh, that possibly will only turn into a liquid asset very slowly, then we need to uh, be concerned about that. And the quick ratio takes that into account. So in the quick ratio, we take current assets and we subtract inventory and then we put it back over current liabilities. So the quick ratio will generally be um, lower than the current ratio. Um, and uh, if we had current assets of 2 million in inventory, 
of uh, 500,000, you would then have 1.5 million of current assets and 1 million of uh, current liabilities as we had before. And that would mean that the, that the uh, quick ratio was 1.5 to 1. Okay, now on top of inventory being a non-liquid asset, uh, there are other things as well that can be a non-liquid asset and we do need to look at the detail of current assets as opposed to just relying completely on these ratios. Look at the detail of current ratios. If the company has a large bank balance, that is, by you know, cash at bank is the most liquid asset and if they have a very large cash balance then Probably they don't have a liquidity problem, even if those ratios don't uh, don't look so good. Um, and also look at the current liabilities. If there's something in the current liabilities, like a lot of long term debt that you know has has become due, then that might be a very bad sign for liquidity. We might need to raise more debt in order to. Uh, keep the company uh, uh, liquid uh, and we'd need to have a plan you know if we've got two million of a of a bank loan that has to be paid in six months time then we need to have some kind of plan as to how that can be paid and if the company was not doing very well and wasn't able to raise enough money to repay that ba bank loan in six months time then it could possibly go out of business okay so those are the two measures, the current ratio and the quick ratio. You need to be able to, you need to know the definitions of those ratios and you need to be able to calculate them given a company's uh, balance sheet. You also need to be able to go beyond that in terms of looking at the company's circumstances. What are the assets, uh, the current assets and current liabilities and what implications have the magnitudes of those amounts for the liquidity uh, position. So what are the key factors then in assessing liquidity? Well, the cash cycle of the firm. Well, what is the cash cycle? The cash cycle is the amount of time it takes the firm to, you know, convert whatever it does into cash. So you take a manufacturing firm, a manufacturing firm has to buy in raw materials. It has to, you know, maybe store the raw materials for a while until it's ready to produce its products. It has to produce its products. Maybe that's a, a, a process that takes some time. It could maybe take a month to produce products. Um, then it has to uh, store the products uh, until a customer comes along and wants to buy the products. And then um, the customer has to pay. Uh, once, the customers are, uh, once the products are shipped to the customer, the clock starts ticking and the customer might have to pay 30 days later uh, although it's more common maybe for people to pay 60 days later. So, you know, for a cash cycle for a manufacturing firm, you know, you've raw materials at the start, raw materials. You've then got production. P R O D. You've got um, uh, finished goods. So you've got finished goods in a warehouse somewhere. And then uh, you have to wait uh, for the receivables to pay. REC, sorry. The receivables to pay. All of that could take six months for some manufacturing firms. And this means that they have to have a higher cash cushion. Uh, you consider other types of businesses, like say an airline, and for most of its activities, an airline is going to receive its cash before it provides the service. So you book a, um, a, um, uh, a flight on Ryanair, uh, you give them the money before you take the flight. So they're in a completely different situation. They're receiving cash all the time for services that they haven't even provided yet. So they're in a very different position to the manufacturing firm. That's why we expect to see different current ratios for different firms in different industries. And you need to think out what kind of industry the firm is in uh, in order to um, be able to interpret the current ratio and the quick ratio. Say something like a supermarket, that has a very favorable cash cycle as well. 
they get in products, let's say they get in some milk from somebody like uh, Glombea or Kerry, and um, they put the milk on the shelves, it sells within a couple of days, uh, and they get the cash directly from the customer. They don't have to wait for, you know, um, uh, credit or anything like that. They get the cash in directly. Um, but they probably don't pay Glombia for 30 days. So again, they're in a favorable cash cycle type of position. Okay, uh, so that's one factor. You've got to think about the cash cycle the industry has that you're dealing with. The second, which we mentioned on the first slide, is the composition of current assets and liabilities. Uh, what's actually in there? What are the magnitudes of the amount? If you've got a lot of cash in current assets, then it probably means you don't have a liquidity problem. At least in the short term, the firm is probably not going to go out of business. Somebody like Ryanair often has, you know, four or five billion of cash on its balance sheet. And that certainly stood to Ryanair during the COVID crisis when it was able to withstand um, uh, the, the lack of business much better than other airlines who had a much lower cash uh, cushion. So uh, in current assets, is our current assets made up of receivables, inventory, um, cash, or some other you know, current asset item that you need to maybe uh, try and understand. And the same for liabilities. Is it mainly made up of debts to suppliers, debts to banks? Um, uh, you, in liabilities as well, as we'll see later in the module, you can have um, things like um, obligations to provide service to customers and they're probably not that much of a liquidity concern. An airline would have large obligations uh, on its balance sheet to provide flights to um, customers in the future, but you know they're they're not uh, not the same as as um, the bank being able to bang on the door to close you down because you can't um, uh, um, service those obligations. And I guess finally, then we expect that the firm will have a margin of safety. So we don't expect firms to really have no cash on their balance sheet and just to live from day to day. We expect that it will there'll be a certain amount of cash there that can deal with any unexpected events. Um, and I guess COVID was an excellent example of an unexpected event for many businesses. Probably airlines were one of the worst hit in that they went, you know, from from 100 percent operations to, you know, 15 percent of operations overnight. And uh, somebody like Ryanair uh, had a lot of cash in their balance sheet, which made it relatively easy for them to, you know, make good decisions in terms of the way they scale down their operations. Some other airlines had to um, make worse decisions because they simply were so stuck for cash that they, they, they couldn't uh, do something else. So we do expect to see cash on the balance sheet and we do expect to see firms take keep a reasonable margin of safety. What exactly that is depends by industry. So the current ratio will depend on you know the circumstance of the firm and there is no uh, specific rule that we expect to see uh, for particular firms, often it's a good idea to compare the current ratio with other firms in the same industry. And then at least you've some hope of, of getting a, a valid comparison. But using kind of benchmarks uh, for the current or uh, quick ratio is probably not a good idea and it's better to do some work on analyzing the firm's situation instead. Thank you for your attention for this video. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.